How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine part 21, making the die block and checking the fit of the parts. In the last episode I made this, so this is the expansion link. And at the moment I'm quite busy with some very fine emery cloth and I'm cleaning up the slot. In the last episode, the final clips of the cutting of the groove with the milling cutter are ran in real time and you can see how slow I was going. So really I don't need to do much cleaning up at all. I just want to make it very smooth so that it slides on the die block without binding anywhere. I've worked on quite a lot of model steam engines over the years and a lot of them have been fitted with Stevenson's link reversing gear, just like this one, with an expansion link and a pair of eccentrics. And it's surprising the number of engines that I've worked on where there have been problems with the expansion link. The most common problem is very, very sloppy, badly made valve gear, or the other end of the spectrum where the valve gear is too tight. But neither of those things are going to be happening with this build though. I'm getting very close to the fitting stage and I'm actually going to cover fitting in more detail than normal. Because often it's not the machining, it's the fitting together of the parts that causes the problems. In the clip that's currently showing on screen, I'm shaping the die block and I'm using the one inch belt sander for this. It seems to be the quickest and easiest method. Using the top of the belt sander, I'm shaping the underside of the die block first. This is the concave part. The way I'm making this die block owes more to common sense than it does to model engineering. I initially cut the piece of steel so I had a piece on the end of it that is half an inch wide. And I haven't separated this piece from the main bar stock because it's very useful to be able to hold the bar stock without burning your fingers. Moving down now onto the flat part of the belt sander, I'm grinding the other surface. This is the uppermost surface when the die block is in the correct position in the expansion link. Because the part that will eventually become the die block is still attached to the bar stock, it makes it much easier to manipulate it on the belt sander. And it doesn't matter if you don't get this right the first time. Just make another piece. In fact, just like I did, this is the second piece and it's cut to a much more accurate shape. And now I've got the top and bottom to the right shape, I need to trim the end. This needs to be perfectly square. So I put the piece of bar stock in the milling machine and in this clip I'm squaring up the end. And just for a change I'm going to let this run in real time. I do a couple of passes to make sure that the end of the die block is perfectly square. And after this I will cut off the part that's going to be the die block from the main bar stock. And before touching the piece of metal I'm just removing the swarf with a brush. I cut the end off the piece of bar stock and here it is, the almost complete die block. All I need to do now is put it back in the milling machine to square up the other end. And after I'd done that I spent some time on the emery cloth, just cleaning up the part, getting rid of any sharp edges and generally making it very smooth. I need it to slide in the gap just like it's doing. There's no appreciable play but it's very smooth indeed. Not quite a piston fit but very close. I have deviated from the drawing slightly, I've rounded the edge of the die block. In theory the die block will not go past the two holes in the bottom lugs, but you never know. So my die block has got rounded ends. The next thing to do is to drill the hole in the middle of it. And again I've purposely deviated from the drawing, I'm such a deviant. The hole in the centre of the die block and the hole in the valve fork are supposed to be 9 64ths of an inch, but I think this is a bit too small. So I'm using 3 16 of an inch, I just made it a bit bigger because I felt it would be stronger and wear better long term. To drill the hole in the die block I followed my normal practice. I used a centre drill first, followed by a twist drill which is one imperial size less than 3 16 3 16 of an inch being the final size that I want, and then I went through with a 3 16 reamer to get a perfect 3 16 of an inch diameter hole in the die block. Before fitting all this together, I remachined the pin that's going to go through the centre of the valve fork and the die block, because the original pin that I made, complete with full size 2BA nuts, seemed just a little bit too close to the two link bars that move the expansion link back and forth. All I did really was shorten the shaft and machine the nuts slightly thinner. And now it's first assembly time, and there's nothing really wrong apart from, hmm, the usual problem which is insufficient clearance in the valve fork to allow the expansion link to move up and down properly. This will have to be remedied. 
because if I was to carry on and fit the engine together, complete with its eccentrics that are not yet made, and run it, then it would break the expansion link, and that would be a tragedy. This is very, very common. As you can see, the expansion link will not go up and down quite far enough because it's fouling here. So I need to remove some more metal, either from the valve fork or the expansion link. I think I'll try the valve fork first. This seems to be a very common problem that occurs in model steam engines, and it's not always down to the drawing. I can see what the problem is. I haven't taken enough metal off the valve fork. I thought it would be okay, but it's not. It's my fault for not following the drawing, really. I thought I'd leave a little bit more meat on there to make it stronger. So I'm going to correct it, and to do that, I need to remove the valve fork completely. And this is not a difficult job. The engine is not yet fastened together completely. If it was all completed, then it would be a pain. But at the moment, it's easy. All I have to do is remove a couple of nuts from the valve chest studs, remove the valve chest cover, and then I can unscrew the entire assembly, and here it is. And here's the problem, there is too much metal in this part of the valve fork, so I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to do it the quick and easy way using a file like this, because I can't wait to see the engine run and I need to get it back together as fast as possible. And by filing the edges like this, it will work. Well, yes it does sort of work, but it looks horrendous. I'm going to do it properly. I filed it first just to demonstrate that it mustn't do this, it's just a bodge. I then put it in the milling machine, and very carefully, and I mean carefully, because you don't have a lot of steel to hold in the machine vise, very, very carefully remove the excess metal. And it's not difficult, you just need a bit of patience, and once again, I'm going to run this in real time. You need a very delicate touch with a piece of metal as small as this. But that's good, I have a delicate touch. But really, it does require some patience. If you let your mind wander for a moment, you're likely to foul up and destroy the part. It's also most important to keep the chips out of the way so you can see what you're doing. When I think back to the way my life has gone, it's a bit strange really. In my twenties it was really good. Lots of sex, drugs and rock and roll. Well, actually there were no drugs other than maybe paracetamol and insufficient sex, but a lot of rock and roll. I once thought about getting a tattoo in those days and I thought it would be really cool to have the word stallion tattooed on my penis. I thought, yeah, that'll look really good, stallion. And I thought it would have maximum rock and roll value. And it would be a good talking point well into my 30s and 40s. And even when I get older, as things get smaller, it will still say lion, which is pretty good. But my plan has gone very wrong. All that it says now is stall. You may have noticed that the second part of that, not the joke, I mean the second part of the video was speeded up. I just couldn't sit through it all in real time, I'm really sorry about this. Anyway, the good news is, the parts work now. There's plenty of clearance on the expansion link and it swings back and forth very nicely. It's not slack and it's not tight, it's doing what it's supposed to do. In this clip, I'm fitting the expansion link properly to the engine with the pin through the centre. And everything's looking good. No fouling, lots of movement, a little bit of clearance, but then again, there's no oil in there either. This is going to work very well. I really am looking forward to listening to the sound this engine makes. It's going to be very smooth indeed. What I've tried to show in this episode is something called fitting. It's not good enough to just machine the parts really well. They need fitting together well, and fitting is an art. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.